Myself keep walking on. Here's something up ahead, water falling like a song. A never lasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow. For my soul, a well that never will run dry. I've rambled on my own, never believing I would find an everlasting stream. Your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow.
Good morning, church. Y'all stay, keep standing. Keep standing. I want you to try to find someone who you do not know in this room, and I want you to share with them what your spirit animal is. All right. If you don't know what that is, then make something up. All right, go. Greet one another in the name of peace of Jesus Christ. What is that? What your spirit animal is. Is that the word? <laughs> I think it's from... Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, I think my spirit animal is a greyhound. A greyhound. Yeah. Because I, like I like to do things really quickly. And then I like to lay on. All right. If, you, if you've shared your spirit animal with someone else, then go ahead. Y'all take a seat where you're at. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Your spirit animal. Yes. And as, uh, as you do take your seat, uh, church, I would invite you to grab the red attendance pads that you have on each row. If you can, go ahead and start filling out that information. If you're a member, it's just a quick couple of lines. But if you're visiting us uh, today, we're really happy that you're here with us. And we hope that you'll take a moment to fill out the larger card that's in there that gives us a little bit more information uh, so that our evangelism team and our welcome team uh, can, can welcome you because you're our guest this day. And uh, one of the pastors will be giving you a call as well. Uh, later in the week, and just to answer any questions you might have about Carnival United Methodist Church and the ways that you can get involved uh, serving the community with us. Uh, there are a few announcements I want to just bring uh, to your attention today. There's one that's in a, a red box to let you know that Acolyte training is happening this afternoon at 2 p.m. If you have a child, if you're a family that goes back and forth between the two services we have at 1045 and you have a child that would like to be an Acolyte, in the traditional setting, then, uh, then go ahead and read that announcement. Uh, do want to say that for uh, children's church and C4 worship will not be taking place today because it is a communion Sunday, and we hope uh, that you will take communion together as a family. So uh, that usual dismissal will not be taking place today. A few more things I want to just uh, lift up for your consideration. In your uh, bulletin, you have uh, your dinner reservations for divine dining. If you want to eat uh, dinner uh, during our Wednesday night live Bible study series and all those things that are happening, you can uh, go ahead and reserve uh, your family's meal and just drop it in the offering bowl that is going to come by later today. I uh, also want to point out that there's a UMW event that's taking place tomorrow. Uh, I'm speaking, but what I'm more excited about is my wife is going to be with me to, uh, to throw some pottery on a potter's wheel. And we're going to be looking at the metaphor of what it means to be in the potter's hands. So if you are, it doesn't matter if you are in United Methodist Women or not, it's open to all women, and uh, that's going to be taking place uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 in room 102. And the last thing I want to be sure I lift up is uh, this insert that you have in your bulletin. This is also for the ladies, uh, a jewel ministry event that's coming up. It's uh, going to be a week from tomorrow, September the 15th at 7 p.m., uh, through the Bible in high heels is a dramatization that some of the ladies from Second Presbyterian Church in Memphis have done, and they're going to come and share their gift with us, and to do that dramatization for us, uh, there, uh, there is no uh, fee for this, there's no tickets, there will be some light refreshments provided afterwards, but ladies, you don't have to RSVP in order to come. If you decide today or tomorrow that you want to come and you want to bring a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, then bring them uh, with you. And uh, the one thing we do ask is that if you come, if you will bring something uh, like baby wipes or diapers or, um, or monetary donations that will go to help pay for car seats, uh, all of those things will benefit Bethany Christian Services, which is uh, one of the missions that we support as a church. We've supported them uh, this year with a communion offering, but this is an additional way that you can help ladies if you come to uh, Through the Bible in High Heels a week from tomorrow, and tomorrow night is in the potter's hands. Uh, so uh, the last thing before we get back up on our feet and continue to worship God this day is to remind you that we, do, uh, we will be taking up a communion offering today. This is in addition to what you would put in the offering bowl when it comes by. Anything you leave 
at these uh, kneelers, these communion kneelers. Uh, this money will go to support the efforts of the Family Violence Council of Collierville. Uh, we heard Sandy come talk to us uh, last week about uh, just the instances in Shelby County and the instances in the town of Collierville of domestic violence and family violence that takes place in the home and the ways that we can help support spouses and children that are being abused uh, in this way. So anything you leave at these rails will go to help them. Uh, I'm so happy to see this place uh, full with you and, uh, and your faces and to hear your voices singing to the Lord. And so I'm going to invite you to get back on your feet as you're able as we uh, sing our praises to God this day. Church, as we prepare to take up our, uh, our offering and we hear our joys and concerns, there's uh, one person I want to introduce to you, 
and I hope that you will help me uh, welcome him. This is Cole Bodkin. He is the new director of Young Adult Ministries for our church. We're so happy that he's here. Will you help me welcome him this day? I'll, I'll let him point out his wife to you as well in case uh, she wants to stand or not. But Cole's going to share with us our joys and concerns, the joys that he's here, and he's going to lead us in our prayer. He's going to be helping me with communion later this day, and you're going to uh, get a chance to hear him preach later this month as well. Uh, but we welcome you, Cole, and I'll let you take it away. What's up, church? <laughs> well, I have to introduce my wife now. Lindsay, will you stand up? <laughs> So I've been here for a month, and this is actually my first time to be in this service. I'm totally digging it right now. This is awesome. So I'm excited to be here. So I want to lift up a few praises this morning. Um, feel free to clap, say amen, hallelujah, whatever you need to do to praise the Lord. Uh, first, we want to praise the Lord for the hurdle's newest great-grandson. Next, we need to praise, um, this is awesome, Darren Hillis. He's had some uh, medical complications from what I understand. He is being released from rehab, so this is awesome. I know he's played a huge role here. <clears throat> Finally, uh, Melba Bice, she's leaving the hospital today. She's coming home, so that's another praise. Amen. Amen to that. So will the ushers uh, come forward now as we enter into a time of prayer? Heavenly Father, we praise you. You deserve all of our praise. And Father, we just we thank you that we can gather here this morning and worship you together. Lord, help us understand what it means to be made in your image. Help us understand the responsibility of bearing your image in this world. Lord, we love you. We pray all this in your Son's name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Wondering why the world has passed him by Hoping that he's meant for more than arguments and failed attempts to fly Fly We were meant to live for so much more Have we lost ourselves somewhere we live And where the mice men have second tries Maybe we've been living with our eyes half open Maybe we're bent and broken
more than this world's got to offer. We want more than the wars of our fathers. And everything inside screams for second life. Yeah, we were meant to live for so much more. And we lost ourselves. We were meant to live for so much more. And we lost ourselves. We were meant to live for so much more. We were meant to live We were meant to live I asked if we could do that, especially for today, because we are looking at how we're meant to live, and we're looking at this world and this creation, and we're going to be in Genesis, and this is what our children uh, were taught today in Sunday school, and we're on this theme now of responsibility, and so I invite you, if you uh, have a Bible and you want to turn uh, in your app, or if you have a physical Bible and you want to turn the pages, uh, we're going to be in Genesis Chapters 1 and chapter 2, uh, we're starting off chapter 1, verse 26 through 31, and then you're going to hear me jump to chapter 2, verse 15, and 19 through 20. So follow along on the screen or follow along in your Bibles and hear these words. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image and the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them, the plants and the trees, for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I've given to them every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And now from chapter 2, verse 15, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And then at verse 19, So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, church? Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, Well, church, we're going to be in this theme of uh, responsibility. And and for this month, we, we have this mantra, I am responsible. I am responsible. And we're going to take a look at what that means to say to someone, I am responsible. All right? as, as a Christian, as a human being, as part of God's creation, what does it mean to say, I am responsible, and to really mean it? Uh, the children will be in this, uh, this theme as well. The pastor's Bible study, uh, Barry just ended a, a series, and I'm starting one this Wednesday, where we're going to be looking at responsibility, and we'll, we're going to go deeper into Genesis chapters 1 and 2 to 
to take a look at what it tells us and what it teaches us about how we've been made and, and what our role is in this world. So I encourage you, if, uh, if you want to learn more about today's scripture, then come on uh, Wednesday night from 6.30 to 7.30 to that Bible study. But here, uh, this day, we're going to be taking a look at what it means to be responsible. And you'll have uh, an opportunity. I threw some of the, the wristbands out last week. You'll have an opportunity to take uh, a wristband that says, I am responsible with you. And I would encourage you to only take it if you're going to wear it so that others will ask you, you know, what does that mean? And then you can, that will start a conversation about what you're learning in this place. Because the mission field is outside of these walls. Right, church? The mission field is outside of these walls. This is a training center. This hour that we're here together is a training time together. So you can go out and tell people about what God has done, what it means to be part of creation, and what it means to be responsible. So that's going to happen later in the service when you come to take communion. If you would like to also take one of these bands to wear, I encourage you to do that. But take it if you're ready to learn more about responsibility and what it means to be responsible. You know, a couple, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, my wife and I uh, were watching uh, a great classic kids movie in, in my mind. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, it doesn't have a great uh, rating. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a movie from 1991. It's a Steven Spielberg-directed movie. Uh, but the critics, the critics didn't give it the, the best reviews. The movie is Hook. With Robin Williams as a grown-up Peter Pan, uh, like like many people over the the past month, uh, there have been more Robin Williams movies sort of watched over Netflix and Hulu and HBO and all those places. Or maybe you had the old VHS, you know, <laughs> cassette. They're, they're like, what's VHS? <laughs> it's like digital download, right? No, yeah, it's yeah VHS and your VCR. And uh, maybe, you know, watched, watched a movie that really meant something to you when you were younger. And that one meant a lot to me. Um, the, 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 you know, the plot of that movie is that Peter Pan grows up. He has kids of his own. And they get kidnapped by the evil Captain Hook. And so he has to go to Neverland to rescue his kids. He has three days to remember what it's like to fly. And he feels, I mean, this over arching sense of responsibility for his children. Uh, his kids were taken, and now he's the one that's going to get them back. And so he's responsible. He's trying to get his kids back. He's trying to return them home safely. And, uh, and at the end of it all, I mean, it, it works out for, for Peter, and, uh, and he gets his kids. Uh, but leaving Neverland means that someone has to be responsible. Someone has to be responsible for the lost boys. Right, uh, because some of them are really young, and uh, and in the in the last time he left, he left Rufio in charge. And uh, I will tell you, I wanted to be Rufio when I was a kid. I found out later in, in life that Dante Basco, which is his name, the actor, is a Filipino actor. And I'm like, oh man, even better, I really could. So I I did at one point dress up as Rufio for Halloween. And if you're friends with me on Facebook then please do not go looking for that picture because my hair was really spiky and it looked ridiculous. So I wanted to be Rufio. and Rufio was the one who was left in charge of Neverland and taking care of the lost boys. And, uh, and before he leaves, Peter knows I, someone has to be responsible. I'm, I'm going to find someone. And, uh, and there was one boy. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you his name, but children, you're not allowed to repeat this name. His name was Thudbutt. I kid you not. His name was Thudbutt because his special move was, uh, was, was making himself into a bowl, ball and rolling down like sidewalks and things and knocking over the pirates. Well, this, this kid was left in charge. And as Peter was handing him the sword as a symbol of you're responsible now, uh, he says, look after anyone who is smaller than you. Look after anyone who is smaller than you. And then here comes one of the smallest lost boys. And he says to Peter, well, who am I supposed to look after? And Peter Pan tells him, 
you can look after the never bugs, the never bugs, the small ones. Now, something about that line stuck with me. You, know, you look after the never bugs, and, and this, this oldest, most mature person will look after everyone who's smaller than him. But the, the idea that, that even the smallest person is responsible for something, right? Even the smallest of us is responsible for something. No matter how old we are, we're responsible for something. No matter how important we think we are or how high a title we have at work or how busy our lives are, we are responsible for someone or something. And this idea that all of us are responsible for something, that comes, you know, really from our, our scripture passage for today when we look at Genesis. This idea that we are all responsible for what God has created comes to us from Genesis. The reason that we know we are all responsible is because all of us were made in the image of God. You know, Cole prayed that prayer about what does it mean to, to bear the image of God, to be made in the likeness of God. And, and for, for the writer of Genesis to say that male and female, God created humankind, it means that all of us have a stake in this world and that all of us are responsible for something that has to deal with creation. You see, uh, many folks in the, in the ancient Near East, when, when this creation story was, was probably first told, many cultures believed that one person bore the image of God, and that one person was the king or the pharaoh. Right? So this king is the only one who is bearing the image of their gods, the only one who's made in the likeness of their gods. And so only the king has the right to rule over other people, right? Only the king. And that's what ancient Near East cultures believed. But what's special about this story from Israel's culture, from our Jewish heritage, is that God takes that honor, that image-bearing honor, and he gives it to everyone. It gets divided out. We all are equal. We all have that equal responsibility of caring for those in our world and caring for the world itself. He disperses this image-bearing honor. So that means that we're supposed to preserve this earth. Right? We're supposed to maintain the earth, to care for the mountains and the oceans and the rivers and the atmosphere. And we also have a role in the creative process, but we'll, we'll touch on more of that in a minute. Okay? You know, the, one of the most interesting things to me as I've, uh, as I've read this, uh, this story and reread it uh, throughout the years is that originally, man and woman and all animals were intended to be vegetarians. Did you catch that when we were reading through it? I've given you every green plant for food. I've given you every tree which produces a fruit with seed in it for food. And for all of the animals, I have given them these green plants for, for food as well. And... Uh, it's, real, it's kind of tough to, to hear that or to consider that. I, I, I dabbled with vegetarianism at one point. It was not fun. Uh, I, I love steak. I do. I love a, a big, juicy, thick burger with bacon. Oh, man, so good. If anybody wants to treat me to backyard burgers later or, you know, any gourmet, we, Burton, you know, I don't know, local, local has some good burgers. But that's quite a trip. Anyways, just a heads up. Christopher's likes. Christopher's favorite things. Um, I'm going to rewrite some Sound of Music one day. And these are my favorite. Burgers with bacon. <laughs> and mayonnaise and relish. Okay, anyways. So, uh, I, I mean, right? Uh, most of us eat meat. Now, there, uh, there actually is an explanation for that later in the Bible. Why we, we now eat meat. 
But here, in the beginning, when everything had just been formed and created, right, we're, we're supposed to be eating just plants, which, you know, Chick-fil-A wouldn't have been around, you know, Philly cheesesteaks wouldn't have been around, just plants. Uh, that, that always uh, struck me as something very interesting, but then as we keep reading, we, we see perhaps the reason why uh, why the first men and women were expected not to eat the animals. And, and it comes when we look to chapter 2, and we see the responsibility of the first man, of, of Mr. Responsible, a.k.a. Adam, and, and what role he had in the creative process. Because God expected him to create names for all the animals. God is, God is bringing all of these animals like a parade, in, in front of him. And all the animals are cool with each other. You know, you got crocodiles and antelopes. They're like, hey, man, what's up? Nothing. <laughs> they're not eating each other because they're vegetarians at this point. And so you see these animals walking by, and, and Adam's like, ooh, mm, giraffe, giraffe. That's a giraffe right there. All right, let's, let's see another one. And then you got this little thing that's like doing this. And it's like, oh, pa, 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 penguin. That's a penguin. And that's a greyhound. And that's, man, he's taking a long time. That's a sloth. You know, ha, he had a role in the creative process with God to say, okay, we're going to create some names for these animals. And once a name is given to something, Right? Significance is added to that life, isn't it? You know, you can see a dog on the side of the street, and you can think to yourself, oh, look at that poor stray dog, and then you just, like, keep driving by. But if it was your dog, you know, Baxter! Baxter! No! You kick Baxter! Okay, you know, you, wouldn't, you would want to get Baxter back in your car. If, or better yet, if you have ever gone to... Uh, an animal clinic or shelter, and you've adopted an animal, and you look for that perfect name, you know, once you've given a name to that pet, to that animal, right, then they become part of the family. It becomes, uh, it becomes real when you go somewhere and you get the name engraved on a little buckle. And, and Tucker Roof and J.J. Roof, those are my greyhounds. So, you know, that something happens when you give something a name, when you, you add significance, because that's what happens with names. And at this point, how could Adam mistreat creation? How could, how could Adam now, after giving names to all these animals, talk badly about them, or want to eat them, or, or do anything to harm them? He has just played a very important role in the creative process by giving names and adding significance to the lives of these creatures. And think about in your own life how maybe if you see that homeless beggar, it's just another beggar. But if it was your neighbor of 25 years and they lost their job, then it takes on new meaning. It's a lot harder to terminate someone from employment or to restructure them out of a position when you know the names of their kids and of their spouse. And when you see a story about a child at St. Jude and you learn that little girl's name, she becomes more than just another statistic or the number of a hospital patient. Names add significance. Names add significance. And Adam had given each of these animals a name. He realizes that he was now Mr. Responsible for all of creation. And if he had not named them, then a command to have dominion and to subdue the earth would have probably looked a lot different. And I'm afraid it, it might have looked a lot like the way we treat the earth and its creation, God's creation now. 
In a way, we all bear the name of Adam. We all bear the name of Adam. You see, the Hebrew word Adam, Adam, is the word for humankind. Right, so in chapter 1, when God makes Adam, male and female, He's saying, I've made humankind. And then that name gets sort of put onto the first person who's in the Garden of Eden, in that second story. We all bear the name Adam or Adam, which means that we are all responsible for God's creation. We are all responsible for what God has made. We are the, the keepers of this earth. We are the preservers. All the way to the, the birds that fly in the air, the fish that swim in the sea, the never bugs who live in Neverland, all the way to the biggest blue whale. We are responsible because we bear the name of Adam. So today, as we approach this table, as we take the Lord's Supper, which even this meal, right? This meal has a name. Some denominations may call it Eucharist. Some call it Communion. Some the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. Whatever name we call it, we know that this has added significance. And so as we approach this table and we eat bread that was made from wheat that fell to the ground, and we drink juice from grapes that were squeezed so that we could have the sustenance. As we take this, and as we prepare to go out into the world, and we're confronted with God's vast, vast creation, I would hope that you would realize that God is still creating God is still creating. There is new birth every day. There is new life every day. And God wants us to be part of that creative process. When we find out that there's a new boy that's on the way, we start thinking about names. When we find out that there's going to be a new member to the family or there's going to be something new happening, at church, and we give it a name, we see God is including us as part of the creative process. And when you, all of you, go out from this place, God is saying, I want you to be part of this creative process. Because the truth is, God wants to trust you with more. God wants to trust you with more. But first, God needs to see that you can be responsible with what God has already made. He wants to trust you with more, but first he needs to see that he can trust you with what God has already made. Remember that names are significant. And so this month, my challenge to you is to bear the name of responsible. Be a, a Mr. Responsible or a Mrs. Responsible or a Miss Responsible. Bear the name of responsible. Take care of what God has already made. Be ready to show this to someone or reply to someone when they say, what does that mean? And say it means that God's entrusted me with everything that God has made. And I am responsible for them. Bear the name of responsible. I pray and hope that you'll be able to do that. That you'll be able to, to, to tell people what it means. And that, you're, that you are ready to accept the challenge for the sake of God's name. May God continue to bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask Cole to assist me today at the table. I'll be blessing the elements from here. And I do want to remind you all of uh, that night that, that Christ was with his closest friends, disciples and others who had been by his side. And as they gathered together 
in the upper room, Christ took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of what God has done for us, we come to this place to take this bread and to take this juice together and to remember what it symbolizes and to acknowledge the fact that God is in this very room right now. We ask God to pour out His Holy Spirit upon us who are gathered here and on these elements of bread and wine. The body of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. We ask God to make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes back in final victory. And all of God's people said, Amen. I would like to...
Church, before I, uh, I give you the invitation to come forward, I want you to know that uh, it takes a lot of people and energy and time for this place to be set up the way it is, uh, for us to have communion the way that we do, and to find the folks to, uh, who are responsible in serving the communion to others. Uh, I would like to just give you an invitation that if you you or your family would like to become more involved at this church and you're looking for something to be responsible for maybe you want to try it out for a month and say okay well let's see what it's like to to be part of the setup crew or to uh, to help out with the children's ministry or youth ministry anything along those lines uh, come come find me after the service today and if you, you, you've got to run, if you've already got something coming up, then call me. Call me in the church office. Because we're looking for responsible people. We're looking for, for people that will serve alongside us. I want to, to tell you that if you have heard God calling your name today, if uh, you've heard this story of humankind in the garden uh, with the animals and, and that call to be responsible for everything that God has created and and you want to re respond to that call by, by joining us in ministry, by transferring a membership from one congregation to this congregation, or perhaps saying in front of everyone for the first time ever, I do believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe that He's my Savior, and you want to be baptized this day, then we can do that as well. I'm going to be down here near the front, near this kneeler. Come find me during this song, if that's the case. If you would like to join or if you would like to be baptized this morning. But for all of us, I would invite you to stand as we sing our praises to God with this closing song. This is a song that I have grown up singing. I remember when it came out, uh, circa 98 maybe? Maybe earlier than that probably. Um, and the youth know the song for sure. It's not a sad song, it's a happy song. It's the happy song, technically. But I want to encourage you, just as we've taken communion today, to really celebrate. I give you permission to do whatever you'd like to do, to get happy. Okay, here we go.
Church, are you going to leave this place happy? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> good, good. Well, go forth from this place knowing that all of us bear the name of Adam, humankind, that all of us bear the name of responsible. What will you be responsible for this week? And how will God show you that God is ready to give you more, but you're needing to take care of what he's given you first? Go forth now in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.